True or false? Adam was wrong for falling with Eve after she had eaten of the tree by eating of the fruit himself. Okay. Did a panelist submit it? No, it was uh, it was from the uh, it was one that we received from the congregation. All right, let's ask this, uh, Sister Lisa to go first on this. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to belabor it. And I'm, it's a very simple question, so I'm just going to say true. And I think that's um, kind of self-explanatory. We can see very simplistically in the scripture. Yes, he was he was wrong. <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, Sister Renee. Well, yeah, it was true that he was wrong for taking the fruit from her but it's just weird how it's worded for falling with eve uh he was the one that had dominion so i don't i didn't see anything happen until he actually ate see i don't know uh, if they became it doesn't seem like they became aware they were naked until he ate it doesn't say when she ate, she realized she was naked, and then he ate, and he realized. He, it seemed like they didn't realize they were naked until he ate. So since he was the one God gave the warning to directly, and it seems like maybe she got the warning from Adam through uh, through Adam from God. I, I'm only making these assumptions based on the limited information I see in the book of Genesis. But of course, it was true. It was wrong, obviously, because God told him not to eat from that tree. And regardless of who is handing it to him, he should not have disobeyed God. So, yeah, true. Well, I can see why uh, Lisa answered the question the way she did without a uh, commentary, uh, because it seems it's so, so obvious. It seemed like a silly question, actually, but really it's not. Now, there, there is more, if you really think about it, uh, that they could be pondered and wonder what was going on. Uh, um, I've heard it said that Adam... Um, uh, he he chose to um, eat because he knew once what happened to Eve once she ate that well she was going to end up uh, dying uh, be, whatever that means because of uh, he knew what God had said and so he chose to eat along with her because he loved her and wanted to be wherever she is and be with her who knows what he was really thinking or. Or did he, uh, I've always said that uh, the first sin was not disobeying God and eating from the tree. But the, the, before that, the sin was disbelieving God and believing Satan instead. God said, if you eat of the tree, you will die that very day. Satan said, no, it's not, not true. And God said, if you won't die that day. You won't die from eating from the tree. And so, obviously, they could believe God, or do you believe believe uh, Satan? And so, it was the sin of unbelief. They didn't believe God, and they also were tempted because they now had a desire to. Whoa, you mean if we eat from that, we can be gods ourselves? You know, he said you could be like God, knowing good and evil. So it was a tempting thing. Plus, they doubted God and believed the devil. They wouldn't really die. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, Satan really, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it, it was, I don't want to say ordained and that God made it happen, but we, you know, it, it, it was, it was going to happen. God knows the future. Uh, and, and so it was, uh, it, they, they did have free will. And uh, see, I think this free will question is, is so, so important. Because un until uh, so they had free will, but they had to be given this choice between the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was their choice. They could choose life or knowledge. And they here were told to better choose life. <laughs> but uh, uh, 
without free will, then of course we know that you can't have a loving relationship. And so they had to, everybody has to choose. Do, do I want God or do I want my own way? That's why the scripture says everybody's uh, gone astray. Everybody's gone their own way. Um, uh, that's what everybody does. I have made a video years ago titled um, Declaration of Dependence. And I said that the garden, Adam and Eve, declared independence from God. They wanted to be their own God. They didn't want to be a follower of God and depending on God and, and, and uh, looking for God to not only provide for them, but to direct them and uh, uh, control them in any way. They wanted to be independent. And so that's what they, they chose, chose. And, and then we all have to choose. At some point, and we have, to, we will decide that we want God or we want our own way. We don't want God, uh, and uh, that's that's how you have a loving relationship. Without that, it's not true love, and that's why the Calvinist position that God actually controls every thought, word, and deed of everybody. Then uh, that means that we're just mindless robots that, or puppets that God's controlling. And, and that means that not only uh, is it not love, because you can't impose love on someone. If you impose it, we would call that rape. Uh, so uh, hey, we have to be we have this relationship with God of our own free will uh, because we desire God and it's not imposed on, on us. And so after Adam and Eve, each of us are in that same position. And I think that's what happened with the, the angels, too. They had to choose. And some chose to follow Satan. And some chose, most chose not to follow Satan, but to uh, be with God. So there's really a lot more things that uh, are related to this question, uh, I think. Yeah, even though the answer is obviously it was wrong for him to do it. Okay, uh, Brother Ben. Well, uh, yes, um, I, I think it's an impor important distinction um, is that when Adam and Eve were in the garden, they were innocent, but they weren't righteous. If they were righteous, they wouldn't have sinned at all. Um, and so they were innocent. And, you know, technically, even before they took and ate of the fruit, uh, they coveted. They desired something that was off limits. So, you know, uh, but it wasn't sin that to do that wasn't technically sin then because uh, there was no law against coveting. It was just you couldn't eat of it was one law you couldn't eat of that of that fruit. So when they um, so when they they uh, ate they became sinners. Um, but uh, was it wrong for him to? Uh, yes, it was absolutely wrong because he it was a, a direct he was you know it was in disobedience to God um, and he knew uh, he wasn't beguiled like Eve was. He knew it was wrong. He knew that he was violating God's commandment. Um, but also, you know, I think he also uh, served, and I'm not excusing him, <laughs> um, but um, the I think he, he, in some ways, he's a type of Christ. He, well, we know he is because he's Christ is the last Adam. But uh, the, you know, so just as, uh, you know, I, I think what, what happened with the Adam is, because again, because he's a pattern, a, a type or a pattern of Christ to come. Uh, or an anti-type, or he, there's a there's it's a type of shadow there. Um, that he uh, Adam did not. I don't. I think Adam could not conceive or or didn't want to even think about continuing on in his life without uh, without his companionship with his his wife. In the same way, um, Christ, uh, we are his wife, the bride, believers, and. Uh, he was, you know, willing to take on our circumstances. He was willing to become sin for us, so that 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 union wouldn't be broken. So he could he could uh, re reconcile us back. And so, just as I think uh, Adam was also didn't didn't want to live without his wife. So he again willingly took on uh, the, the the circumstances because um, he couldn't again couldn't conceive of living without her. So I I think that in that way Christ also too again like I said. He uh, willingly uh, stepped into our reality, so that he could he could reconcile us back. Um, so, but, but it was definitely wrong. But he, I think he did it uh, out of love for his wife. Essentially, I don't think he did it necessarily uh, just to disobey God. I think he did it to for the love of his wife. Um, 
but it but ultimately again if it's if, if god said don't do it then that trumps everything else it doesn't matter what our motivations are uh or uh anything else the law is the law so um but again i ultimately we know that with the spirit behind the law is the pointing to grace so and, and grace always trumps uh judgment Okay, thanks, uh, Sister Heather. Yes, um, I think Ben hit the nail on the head, not so much as a I think, but as a as a statement of fact that Adam did not want to know what life would be like without his wife. Um, the evidence that I see for this is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, um, it says, and the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable for comparable to him. Verse 19, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called the, uh, called every living creature, that was its name. And then here's the kicker in verse 20. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to them, to, uh, comparable to him. God knew before Adam knew that Adam needed someone and God waited until Adam realized that need before he provided that someone for him. So Adam saw and desired and needed and wanted for this. And I think that that's a, a perfect picture for us in our lives. When, when the Bible says you have not because you ask not. So did he, did he at that point decide she is, she is going to die. So how will I live without her? Yes, I believe absolutely he did. Um, and actually, if you're reading the story of, of when they, um, they ate from the fruit, first of all, they were told they could eat from every tree except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which means they were supposed to eat from the tree of life. They chose wrong, firstly. Secondly, um, it says that after Eve ate from the fruit, she gave it to her husband who was with her. He should have told that, that serpent to go eat some dust or something. He should have told him to leave his wife alone, but he didn't. He let the serpent talk to his wife. And because of that, she sinned. And because she sinned, he could not imagine life without her. So he sinned along with her. And I think that that is a very good example for us. That um, it's so important for us to decide for ourselves and to really seriously consider the, the consequences of our actions regardless of whether it means that we will lose that person in our life or whatever. Sometimes we just need to choose God before man. That's pretty much all I got. I hate what religion and men have done with this story. And at least sister Lisa brought up how she has heard so many men twist this story up. <laughs> And act like, oh, Eve was just, that's what happens when a man don't keep tabs on his wife. She just wandered away and got him into all this trouble and he didn't control his woman. I mean, she has heard the same things I've heard. And you see right there, Sister Heather mentioned his wife who was with him. They were together when this happened. And. Uh, I love how everybody has seen that this is a picture of Christ, that the tree of life is Jesus, but they chose law. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the law. That's how we know what's good and what's evil is the law. And instead of choosing life, which is Christ and grace. And I also 
uh, noticed I'm guilty of the same old mindset that I grew up in. Went right to the he had dominion. But Lisa's right. They had dominion. And Adam, male and female, he created them. Adam is the name for mankind, not just the male of humans, but mankind. And uh, if you go, I think it's Genesis 5 or something it says, or I don't know. But off the top of my head, it's not there. 2 5, I think. So uh, what I do notice though is when it says, and your husband shall rule over you, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. I, I think. That was part of the curse. Part of the curse is that they were no longer um, uh, on equal footing, where they both had strengths that were different. They both had attributes that were different, but complementary to each other. They were made one flesh working together. But when the fall came, she desired her husband, and now he's going to rule over her, and, and her childbearing was going to be more painful. And so men in their patriarchal mind have used women as property, as something to own and control instead of what was originally supposed to be the case. And, and I hate it. And I hate what even uh, every Christian church has taught. That God somehow can't use women and doesn't love women. And I know this wasn't part of the, the question, but I think it's important here to point these things out when we're given a question about the Garden of Eden. Because we need to look at what happened before the fall. And Paul says that there is no more male or female in Christ. Nobody is lording over one or another. God can use all of us because the Holy Spirit dwells within each believer. And when we're in Christ, we are no longer under the curse. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And I believe in Timothy when it talks about uh, she shall be saved through childbearing. I think that that is saying that God's final word to women is not the curse of childbearing or that the curse of her pain would be so great. That's not God's final word. She shall be saved in childbearing. So yeah, that curse was put upon woman, but that's not God's final word to woman. That's something that, that is temporal and in the flesh that woman endures because of the original fall. But that is not something that goes on into eternity. It is not God's final word, nor is it, it his, his view of women. Because there is no more male or female. We're not judged by the flesh anymore, but we're one in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sister Lisa, you, would you like to say any more now? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, Sister Renee covered it. Somebody's been listening to me, but <laughs> just teaching Sister Renee. But yeah, we've talked about this a lot. And, uh, it, and I had pointed that out, how you'll hear men go off on these tangents, see a lot of these preachers, and they'll preach how uh, they act like the woman, uh, Eve. Now, again, we, uh, this is the other thing I hate. They, I know that there are certain things that we have as a result of the fall, male and female. Got it. Okay. Undeniable truth. However, they act like all women are guilty for what Eve did. Like we did it. No, there were only two people back there in the garden that did this. They were the only two people who got to make that choice to sin. The rest of us were all together born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Our condition was given to us. They chose their condition. So th that's just always puzzling to me. It's like they, they just condemn women forever for what uh, she did back in the garden. Okay? And I keep pointing out that she was deceived. The Bible says he knew what he was doing. She was tricked. If you look up deceived, it means tricked, hoodwinked, bamboozled, bushwhacked, snuggered. It means you did not know. You didn't have a complete understanding. You were tricked. So, you know, I, I, I'm puzzled why they don't ascribe more importance to that that it was very significant and i also believe this is one of the reasons the lord could send a redeemer because fraud voids any contract 
if you're tricked into something, that's fraud. And so, you know, I know I probably get a, a lot of hate on that, but I don't, I really don't care. It's, that's what it says. And then also, uh, they always act like the man went, un, you know, went under a tree and went to sleep while the woman got into mischief. Like he was off somewhere fishing and she went off by herself with the devil. But the Bible says her husband was with her. And I believe with means present and in agreement. And, you know, it's like I said, if you're going to walk to the store and I said, uh, are you with me? Well, if you say yes, then you're going to go with me. If you say no, you're not with me. Well, if if he's present, if her husband was with her, just like Jesus said, um, can two walk together except they agree? So. The difference was, and, I, and, 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 you know, I understand men saying, oh, he loved her so much he decided to fall. But the passage doesn't say that. It says he was with her. So I'm thinking she was deceived. He knew what he was doing. He wanted to do it, too. But he knew what he was doing. Now, if, if y'all want to read into it and say it's because he wanted to do the noble thing, I really don't have a problem with that. It's just that it doesn't say that. And if you show me somewhere else in the Bible where it says he did the noble thing, then fine. I want to see it, but it doesn't say that. As far as I can find it, he knew what he was doing and he chose to sin. Why? Because the devil had told him, you shall be like God. And, and, and this is what cracks me up. They were already like God. The Bible said they were made in his image and after his likeness. So he had nothing to offer but a lie. <laughs> he didn't even have pockets to have lint in and he had to go get the serpent to be his voice because spirits didn't have any authority in this realm. But, you know, anyway, so there's a whole lot this, this in that passage. A lot of people read into it. I just like reading exactly what's there. They were co-equal from the beginning. And it is important to note the beginning because Jesus spoke about it when he walked the earth. When he said, uh, when he was talking to the Oh, I'm trying to remember what group of people when he told him, you do error, not knowing God and the scriptures. And he said, if you go back to the beginning, when Moses gave a rid of divorce, he gave it because of the hardness of your heart. But from the beginning, it was not so. So if Jesus is pointing back to the beginning, he wants us to see what was so. Well, he said that wasn't so from the beginning. Let's go back and see what was so. Well, what's so was they were co-equal. And I believe this is one of the reasons why he didn't speak up because he didn't have authority over her. God didn't give him dominion over her. He gave them dominion over all of creation. So uh, a lot of times people read stuff in it that is just not there. If you just read it plainly, it's not there. So he didn't have authority over there. And he could have said, sweetheart, uh, God said we ain't supposed to do that. But he didn't because he wanted to do it too. Now, that's what with her means. But a lot of people will argue with you about it. I take it literally when it says with, it means present and in agreement. That's what it says there. A lot of people fight you on it. I'm just going by what it says. That's Amen. it. I agree with her on that. Yeah. There's Amen. a lot of continued false teachings and insults to women based on the Garden of Eden. A lot of it. Like uh, uh, the, the woman was deceived and not the man. Well, I, I don't think, and they use that to say, yeah, women are, uh, they become false teachers because they're more easily deceived. That It doesn't say that women are easier to deceive. It said the woman was tricked and the man wasn't, meaning the man did it with full responsibility. So instead of saying, okay, the man did it with full responsibility, instead they twist it to say all women are easily deceived. And that's not what the verses are saying either you know i, I know you heard that lisa mm -hmm. uh women are easy yes. to see well that's not also the paul is putting the emphasis when he goes back and says the woman was deceived he's setting the record straight because people were going and telling it incorrectly mm -hmm. it wasn't that he's going women can't be trusted because the first woman was deceived which is what they they're saying the scripture is saying that's not what paul is saying Paul is going back and correcting the record and saying, no, the woman was deceived. He's setting it in order, saying the man was created first because they had this goddess worship that yep. these people were coming out of and they were esteeming women above men. And he said, no, 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 no. According to the scripture, the man was made first. But people don't see what he's saying. And they start reading this stuff into and then they castigate all women because of what she did. And I said, OK, let's follow your logic. 
Let's follow your logic. If no woman can be trusted to bring the word of God because a woman was deceived from the beginning, then no man can be trusted to bring the word of God because he committed high treason. Yep. yep. Amen. Yeah. Well, Sister Lisa, I knew that you would have more to say about this. Uh, I, I, I knew that you weren't just going to say simply ha. true or false. Yeah. But, uh, in the, yeah, you, the point you've both made, or Renee and uh, Lisa, clarifying what the scriptures actually say about this. Yeah, it was Eve that was, um, she was, uh, it's a minor infraction. That's why what, what is, her consequences are, are uh and blame is nothing compared to Adam because he full, knew full well what was what he was doing. So he's really the one that's blamed for sin entering the world. Uh, but uh, it is true that I know men that use these scriptures and along with uh, wives submit to your husbands and the, the, to, to lord it over their wives and dominate them. And uh, I, I lost quite a few friends uh, years ago when I made a video titled uh, Husbands, Submit to Your Wives. <laughs> a lot of these guys really, uh, uh, they made a lot of videos against me after that one. I'm but, sure uh, you did. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you always want to emphasize wives submitting to their husbands, but the verse before it says, submit yourselves one to another. One to another. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna. Why are you gonna ignore that? So, if we're gonna submit ourselves one to another, okay, I'm supposed to submit to every person, right? In other words, put other people before me, their needs before myself. But my wife's the exception. Uh, everybody, I submit to everybody, but not my wife. She has to submit to me. That's that's the way the man wants. I had a guy named Daniel Palmquist that was a young street preacher that w w started working with me years ago, and his wife Joy. And he mistreated her so badly, so disrespectfully. I had to really lecture him about it. But he was actually making her call him Lord because Sarah called Abraham Lord. And uh, that, that the, a lot of men, I, I think there are men. That, that the only reason they're Christians is so they can say, see, wives, you have to submit to your husbands. That's yep. the only reason they're Christians. Yep. Uh, Chris LaSala is notorious for being very abusive to his wife because of this attitude of women, of his attitude about women. It's horrible. Okay, any more from anyone or should we try another question? We're getting close to the end here. Yeah, so I just want to say one other quick thing. Yeah, go ahead. Because of this, I call it um, ridiculous doctrine that you know, the silence doctrine and complementarianism in such matters. There is a dirty little secret that is in the church. Uh, there's a website, I think it's called Women's, Women Submit, that, that documents these different stories of pastors' wives, other women, ministers' wives, who are being physically abused because of the silence doctrine and because of complementarianism that wives are supposed to submit to their husbands. Because see, when they're teaching this stuff, you have to ask yourself, okay, if the husband sets some whatever it is, whatever standard that he decides is law in his home, and that woman doesn't submit, what's the alternative? Physical abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse. And that's what's happening to women. And this is a dirty secret and not enough people are talking about it. It needs to be addressed. It is evil. It is not the spirit of the Lord. Uh, if you want to check that out, it's a, a good Christian site who has exposed the, the errors of the complementarian doctrine and the, the silence doctrine and, this whole, and there's, you know, the submission doctrine uh, where it's twisted. And it's literally women are literally Christian women being physically abused by their husbands yep. it's sad but it's true and you guys should know about it and we need to speak out against it because it is it look the fruit lets you know it's not right yep. when the when the fruit when it's the fruit of christ it is going to bring the fruit of the spirit so there wouldn't be abuse if it was right but it's not yep. right which is why you see abuse and all this ugliness uh people forget that uh in the first century First of all, in the synagogues, women were not permitted even to enter. 
As a matter of fact, the Talmud says it's better to burn the Torah than teach it to a woman. That's what their attitude was. So in the first century, when women were allowed inside the congregation, there were all kinds of issues. One being that men didn't know how to act against this because they, all, they had all these prejudices about women. Now, the pagans, kind of, some of them did the same thing. Uh, they would have either temple prostitution that women were involved in. Then you had goddess worship and that whole bunch of mess. But they also uh, sometimes separated their males and females based on this whole false teaching and belief. So when there's issues like being silent in the churches, it's because women would ask questions of their husbands. They would yell across the room. Uh, and he's saying, hey, no, let them be quiet in the church. Wait till they get home and ask their husbands then. Not yelling in the church. But people take these things out of context, like Lisa was saying, not realizing what's going on contextually or even in the society during the first century. Christianity had more female converts than anything else. It was tons of women converting to Christianity because of the love of God in Christ. And even as Celine pointed out, when Mary and Martha were there and Mary sat at his feet, what, is, what it means to sit at the feet of the rabbi means that you are learning the Torah. You are learning from the rabbi. If you sit at his feet, you are learning. And Jesus said she has chosen the good part. No one can take it from her. But Martha was busy, worried about serving and taking on the traditional role of a woman and was upset that her sister wasn't helping her. But I think Jesus makes it clear his love and trust for women. And even though women could not even be witnesses in a court of law, he chose them to be the first to see him risen. And you see the failure and the uh, carnality of the apostles when they don't believe the women's testimony. They're just women. They were had the flaws of men just like anybody else. And I think we can't, it's sad, but in the Christian church, it is really, Sister Lisa was pointing out, it is so strong in the Christian community that women are limited and and shut down and told what they can do for the Lord. And some people have just seen God work mightily through women and had no choice but to say, I, you know, I know what the scriptures say and I was brought up believing that, but God showed me he was using this woman. There's nothing I can do. I mean, who am I to tell God what he can do? It's because they've been taught these scriptures say something different they are meant to mean. And I think it. I, I come against it every day. Brother Luke knows it. Every day somebody comes. I suffer not a woman or women be silent. You, I mean, they are constantly coming at me with that. Thinking that I guess they think I've never heard those verses before. But it, it's really sad because this attitude is is causing division. We can't work as one unit. And by the way, I just want to say it's really hard for a woman to prophesy if she's got to be quiet, mm -hmm. which Paul tells the women they can prophesy. So it's kind of hard to yeah. do that. It's kind of hard one, for me to read the letters, too, if she can't speak. One other quick thing I wanted to mention was John uh, chapter 20. Verses 17 and 18, I put it in the uh, the chat, how when the Lord was risen, uh, the first two people he spoke to were women. And he literally tells them to go tell the disciples the gospel. And, the, and, and let's just presume the rest of the disciples, I'm sure there were some other women as well, but we know they were the 12. Jesus said unto her, touch me not. For I'm not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my father and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Now, that the first two people after his resurrection that he saw and spoke to were women. This is not insignificant, but people glaze right over it. 
They run right past it. They literally went and declared the gospel to the disciples, most of which were men. So I don't know. There you want scripture for it. There it is right there. Yeah, I'm glad we finally got you fired up, Sister Lisa. You're much more fun. You're much more fun when you get fired up. Well, this is something I'm very passionate about because women are women are suffering. More to say about this. Can, and men. Because men are placing the bondage as well over this. Mm -hmm. Can I say what the word submit means here? Because we got somebody saying if a wife doesn't submit to her husband. The word submit, when it says submit yourselves one to another, means put their needs above your own. That's all it means. Put their needs above your own. So submit yourselves one to another. Put the other's needs before your own. Yeah. That's what we're all supposed to do in Christ. We yeah. submit to Christ, meaning we put what he needs before our own needs. So mm -hmm. submitting doesn't mean allow them to rule over you and dictate everything you do in your life. That's yeah. not what it means. Amen. And whoever made that statement, uh, um, the um, Jesus, he said, do not think I came to be served, but rather to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Matter of fact, this is what I was talking to my, uh, about with my wife earlier, is that I said, Jesus came for two reasons, to serve and to die for us. And to serve, uh, he, he wasn't interested in us serving him. He wanted to serve us as an example. That's why when he washed the feet of the apostles, it's the most humble thing you can do. And, of course, we know Peter's reaction to that. But he, he, Jesus did that as an example. And he says, if you really want to be great, so whoever said, wrote about, you know, you have to submit if you or don't get married. Uh, well, um, I would say to him or her, uh, you, uh, if you want to be great, then you need to submit yourself to everybody including your wife or your husband, whatever you are, you need to submit. And, and, and in other words, as Lisa, as uh, Renee said, put your, their needs before your needs. It doesn't mean that you let them, uh, you're, you're, you're the, they're your master like you're a dog. Uh, but uh, we're supposed, it's, it's again, they, they, they fit, skip right over. What is it? Doesn't your verse, your Bible contain the verse, submit yourselves one to another? Why is that so conveniently, uh, you know, skipped over? <laughs> husbands, submit to your wives. Wives, submit to your husbands. Brethren, submit to each other. Everybody. Put, uh, put other people's needs ahead of your own. That's why this Joy Palmquist, uh, she, she got me this shirt and it says J-O-Y on it or something. And, and it stands for Jesus, others, yourself. And that's supposed to be the order that we, we, we uh, our priorities. We put Jesus first, ourselves last, and, and, and other people ahead of ourselves only after Jesus. That's joy. If you can do that, if you can humble yourself, submit yourselves uh, in that way to everybody, uh, that's humility. And that to me is the difference. That, that's what's necessary for someone to get saved. Because if you don't have humility, if you, you'll think, I don't need Jesus. I'm so good on my own. And then once you are saved, the humility and uh, will uh, allow you to serve. Okay. Uh, we're getting close to the stop time. So I think we should uh, some uh, finish up with this question if you have more to say, and then we'll start giving our summaries. Ben's been pretty silent. Ben, what are you, are you objecting to this, all this uh, talking about men submitting to their wives, huh, Ben? I'm not objecting at all. No, I'm just, I'm submitting. I'm submitting. All right, good. Okay, because. Sadly. So the definition someone pulled up was to obey. How do we uh, obey yourselves one another? Do we obey every person in the Christian church one to another? Submit is to put their needs 
above your own and vice versa. So if the husband is putting the wife's needs above his own and she is putting his needs above her own, then everybody wins. Everybody wins. So yeah. men does not mean to dominate, to force into obedience. That is not what it means. So if uh, su submit always meant to obey, then it wouldn't make any sense. Submit yourselves one to another. Obey one to another. The context there is to put another's needs above your own. And although the husband is the head of the family, if Christ is his head, then he should love the wife self-sacrificially as Christ loved the church, then she could obey him because his leadership would be from Christ. But submit in general doesn't mean blind allegiance and obedience so that you're dominated or ruled over. That is not what it means. And sadly, that's the uh, definition that's coming up.